موسیقی وشور المور محدثاتها وکل محدثت بدعہ وکل بدعات دلالہ وکل دلال فی النار All the praise due to Allah سبحانہ وتعالی and blessings be on the Prophet Muhammad رسول اللہ صلی اللہ علیہ وآلہ وسلم and his companions تعبین اتبا تعبین and all on those people بإذن اللہ who are going to follow them My dear brothers in Islam once there was a woman in the war she loses a child, she lost a child and she was struggling and putting strong efforts to find it and once she found it she embraced the child as something the most important thing in her life this scene was witnessed by the companion of the Prophet along with the Prophet the Prophet asked a question to the companions do you think that this mother can throw a child, this particular child, into the fire? Then companion, they say, definitely not. She will never do it. Then Prophet ﷺ, he says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves his slaves far better than this mother. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will throw his slaves into the fire? Hadith is giving us the lesson that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he loves his slave too much. The only one destiny of Muslim is Wallahi and that is Jannat al-Firdaus of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not below than that. Every believer, every Muslim must make it to Jannat al-Firdaus because that's our real destiny. That's the real aim of a Muslim. To please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and as a reward to get the Firdaus. Wallahi Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he says that his rahmah his love is heavier than his anger. Heavier than his anger, Wallah. The scholars, they have mentioned that on the day of judgment, each and every human being along with the prophets, they were saying, Rabbi Sallim, Rabbi Sallim. Oh Allah, save my life, save my life. Even the prophets, they don't care about anybody else on that day except by themselves. That oh Allah, save my life, save my life. And the hadith says that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala He created hundred parts of rahmah, hundred parts of blessings. And He sent down on this earth only one. The love, the compassion, the mercy you see between the mother and a child and between every two creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on this planet. Almost more than, more than thousands of creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala on the planet. Whatever mercy and the love they are sharing, it is only one percent. And one part of Rahmah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down to this planet. But look at the gravity of the fear of that particular day of the day of judgment. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala kept 99 parts with him to judge the human beings on that very day. The hadith mentioned that even this one part of dunya he will combine with the 99 and 100% combined together he will judge the human beings on the day of judgment. That's the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala towards his creation. He loved us, Wallahi, too much. That's of a lot of places. The scholars they mentioned when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Wallahi, in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu. Ya. There is no words in any language which can explain this word Ya, the way Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioning it in the Quran. It's like a mother. It's like a mother, you know. She's witnessing the child that he is going to the fire. He's just going to enter into it. And then she said, Oh my child. The way she pronounced O oh, from the deepest of his heart, her heart, that's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is mentioning to the believers that Ya ayyuhalladina amanu, O oh, you who believe, is huge love and mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Wallahi, only gathered in this one word, Ya, when he called all of us. 
That is the reason Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, especially to this ummah, He blessed a lot of packages, a lot of bonuses He gave to us, that through which you can make it to paradise very easily. But at the same time, temptations and trials of this dunya, they're huge. They will be difficult. That's why even single, th some few things in Islam, wallahi, the impact of them is huge. Just take Laylat al-Qadr. In the month of Ramadan, Laylat al-Qadr, wallahi, it is huge. One night can give you a reward of 83 years of worship. Imagine if you lived 83 years, and each time, each year you get the Laylat al-Qadr, how many times just by standing one night in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you get it. This only one in itself, Laylat al-Qadr is sufficient for a believer to take heed of the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala of the blessing and the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in our life Wallahi Shaykh Yawar Beg once he sent, he sent me an email in the email he sent me the top 10 richest people in the world and when he come to the second he mentioned Warren Buffet but when he come to the last one the first one he says the one who prays two rakah of sunnah of Fajr he is the richest man on the planet believe it if you do it why because this is the hadith of the prophet sallam, that the one who pray two rakah of sunnah al-fajr that before the first prayer you make it they are better for you than whatever between the heavens and the earth who have more wealth than that but we muslim don't pray like that he is the wallah in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that very individual is the richest guy on the planet he says believe it if you do it but best of all, my dear brothers, best of all the packages, after shahada, of course, after prayer, is fasting. Is fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The scholars, they mentioned, wallahi, each and every pillar of Islam is like an institute in itself. It's like a school in itself. You need to go for the class. You need to act on that particular pillar and then get the training that what it taught you and then apply it into your life. Well, I see the prayer itself. It's a different kind of department in Islam. You come into it, there's a particular schedule for it. This is how you're going to pray. This is the pre-request for you to pray in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You need to make a proper wudu. If you are junub, you need to make a ghusl. All of those schedules are there once you enter into the department of salah. It's a complete school. Take it like a school when you come for prayer. Similarly, zakah, it's a different department. It is going to teach you something different. It is going to, the objectives of zakah, it's totally different than prayer. When you go to zakah now, there is a different schedule. If you have cows, if you have sheep, if you have a land, if this type of wealth you have, then this is the money you need to give it out. And you have to go out, not the poor have to come to you. It's a different department. Hajj is totally different department, isn't it? Totally different department. You go to it, there is a complete different procedure for a hajj. It's going to teach you something different. You're going to get from that particular hajj department something different. Each and every pillar of Islam is a department in itself. Is a wallahi institution in itself. You can build a whole school only on these particular topics. You can wallahi generate the best of nation only on one particular pillar of Islam. You can generate the nations on one institute, wallahi. But unfortunately, Islam is left to a bunch of cultures, customs. You pray, you've grown up like that. You fast, you've grown up like that. Most of the Muslims, you ask them, why you fast? Because I saw my parents to fast. Why are you fasting? They don't really reply to that. Each and everything, Allah in Islam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned the objective of that particular thing. He mentioned the objective. That's why those Jews, those Christians, those non-believers, they really go deep into things, isn't it? That's why now they are the one who are writing books. The hidden benefits in fasting. The mysterious benefits in fasting. Well, I just go on YouTube or Google. Just now I was writing the benefits of fasting. I was trying to look something in Islam. But all of the articles, they came from the non-Muslim perspectives. All of them, wallahi. Some of them from atheists. Can you believe that? Look how they are taking our thing, which is fasting. How they are taking in their lives. But how we are taking in our lives. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned in the Quran, most of us we know this ayah. 
from Surah Al-Baqarah. Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu kutiba alaykum usayamu kuma kutiba al ladhina min kablikum la allakum tattakun. That's why you see Jews also they have fasting. Christians also they have fasting. Hindus also they have fasting. Buddhists also they have fasting. Because Allah is mentioning in the Quran. That fasting is prescribed to you the way it was prescribed to people before you. Before Isa alayhi salam, Musa alayhi salam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala prescribed them too. And today you see all of the religion almost, they have the something called which is called fasting. They have it. But what is the point of it? So that you can learn God consciousness. Scholars they mentioned that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala singled out fasting, I will only reward it, isn't it? That fasting is for me and I will the only one who will reward it. Why? Because each and everything can be witnessed by human beings. You give zakah, somebody have to witness it, isn't it? You pray, somebody will witness. You give shahada even, somebody will witness. You do hajj, millions will be witness. But when you fast, nobody witnessing it except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can hide. You can hide yourself, isn't it? And you can do whatever you want, but you don't. I mean that action came to this world, revealed to this world along with this, that it will give you God consciousness. Wallahi, I saw many evil people, evil people, wallahi, they say that it is impossible for us to left a day without smoking. Impossible. But wallahi, they don't smoke in the month of Ramadan. How they do that? They don't smoke. I know many people, they have abusive language, they use abusive language too much. In every maybe sentence they will use F word. But when the month of Ramadan came or when they are fasting, they're going to say it and then, oh, sorry, I'm fasting. I'm not going to do that. I saw many people, they're rude in behavior. They're rude in their attitude. Wallahi, they're rude. And the moment they're going to fight and they are fasting, Wallahi, they will leave it. They say, go, man, just be away from me because right now I'm fasting. This is accompanying with fasting that whenever you fast, they will be God conscious in your heart. You will feel that. That's why scholars they mention that if it is hard for you to come out of any addiction, wallahi, either it is alcohol, pornography, or sexuality, or girlfriend, boyfriend relationship, wallahi, just fast. Fast for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You will come out of it. Because it's the hadith of the Prophet. He said that fasting is like a shield, it will keep you away from evils. You know, now it's a word of 3D, isn't it? The technology. You feel that when you fast, things like a blue type of circle around you, isn't it? The way they show in animation movies nowadays. Feel that. That there is an animation type of circle, a blue circle around you right now, Wallahi. Nobody can touch you. No evil can touch you. Because you are fasting for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi whoever fasts for the sake of Allah, he will be away the distance of 70 years from the hell. But you have to fast the way it's supposed to be. The Prophet ﷺ, he says, if you are fasting and you are still committing sins, if you are fasting and you are still committing evil, Allah does not need your hunger. He does not need your thirst. You are wasting your time. You are wasting your time. Because fasting in itself means abstaining, right? Being away from particular thing which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned. Fasting, my dear brothers, is an institution in itself. There is a book written on it. Wallahi, the book's written. And when you go read with that, Wallahi, your belief, as a Muslim, your belief should be increased in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That whatever He descends from the heavens, there is something big benefits in it. Big benefits in it. And one of that, Wallahi, it is fasting. A lot of us, we have a lot of obstacles. Whatever they may be, Wallahi, they can be destroyed only by one weapon given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That is fasting. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fast. Wallahi, fast, my dear brothers. It will change your life. If you fast the way it's supposed to be, inshallah. Inna alhamdulillah. Wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah. Wa ala alihi wa sahabi ajma'in. My dear brothers, beside the fasting, which is obligatory in the month of Ramadan, the Prophet ﷺ, he mentioned other fastings too. Because month of Ramadan in itself is a training session. They called it annual refreshment course. Annual refreshment course for a Muslim. It's a spiritual course for a Muslim to be remain in the same attitude for 30 days. 
same exactly same attitude yani from morning until evening and until the eid al fitr you are in the same attitude it's a training session from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala especially designed for the believers especially this particular thing is not designed for anything else except for fasting allah subhanahu wa designed it so that you can feel the fasting the power of fasting and take this attitude in the rest of year that's is the reason the fasting from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not stop there allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make some more fasting which is voluntary which is not compulsory for all of us but they have a huge impact in our life one of that is the fasting on monday and thursday why is that because the hadith of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he says that monday and thursday our deeds are represented in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala every monday and thursday so i want my deeds to be packed in fasting in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala angel have to witness the morning angel will say to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allah will ask how did you find my slave he was fasting in worship the evening angel allah subhanahu will ask them how did you find my slaves they were fasting they were in state of worship and that witness is huge in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are in continuously state of worship every monday and thursday it is a sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to fast the second one is the three days in each month to fast which is 13 14 and 15 of the moon you know not the sun of the lunar calendar it is a sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to fast then the six days of shawwal is a sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam to fast he says whoever fast the month of ramadan and accompany it with the six days of shawwal it is as though he fasted the whole year then the fast on the day of arafa just now we did alhamdulillah may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam whoever fast his future coming year sin and the previous year sin will be forgiven then the fast which is coming insha allah on 10th of muharram prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam asked the jews they used to fast on the 10th of muharram he asked them why you fast he said because this was the day when we get freedom from the firaun and we celebrate it by fasting in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said we are more closer to musa alaihi salam than you guys i will also fast but we have to differ the prophet said if i remain alive next year i will accompany it one more fast yani either the 11th or the 9th so that to be unique as a muslim ummah in front of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala these are the voluntary fasting my dear brothers allah my dear brothers islam we have to proud of it islam is a complete code of life please and wallahi please and wallahi please stop taking it as a tradition stop taking it as a sect stop taking it as a custom but take it as a code of life islam is not meant to be in masjid islam is not meant to be when you reading quran only islam is not meant to be keep up to until beard you get the beard you start wearing hijab that's islam khalas wallahi islam is far better than that you need to take this thing learning from the masajids from these khutbas to go out on the streets and being proud that you are blessed with the beautiful region of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is islam complete submission to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala don't take islam as a sect islam is not founded by the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam islam was there since the beginning for madam peace be upon him until to the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam he completes it this is important wallahi take islam not as a sect i'm saying again you know hinduism christianism this 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 and then islam also come in make islam is the only religion wallahi if you hindu any really hindu wallahi you know the really hindu i mean the one who knows what is in the scriptures you can be best hindu when you accept islam because each and everything you will find in islam be isnilla if you really a christian wallahi a really christian is following a bible you can be the best muslim by far you can best christian by following islam because each and everything which is pure you will find in the islam whatever religion you belongs to allah you have something for you in the islam you have something that is the reason when the first time by sheikh zakir naik he gave the speech that similarity between hinduism and islam there was a huge criticism on him impossible look at this guy he is going to change the religion right now but when he explained the hindu priest he says hindu priest he was a priest he says wallahi what i don't know in 40 years i just knew it in 4 hours 
He don't know his own books. Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam by name is mentioned in all scriptures. Alhamdulillah. You have to be proud of that. Look at your religion, wallahi. Look at the system you have. I just explain one thing: fasting, wallahi. There is a thousand of books in Islam is written only on this one institution, only on in one thing that is fasting. Please fast, my dear brothers, wallahi, because this will take you closer to Allah subhanahu wa taala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa taala, may Allah subhanahu wa taala instilled in our hearts the true faith, the true believes in Him, wallahi. I ask Allah subhanahu wa taala, may Allah subhanahu wa taala give you the courage and give you the confidence on what you are following, on your beliefs, on what you are following in front of Allah subhanahu wa taala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa taala, may Allah use all of us to propagate this religion. This religion of Islam, which is complete submission to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, to the rest of mankind. I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala keep us away from the fire, keep us away from all of those actions which can take us to the fire, and may Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala take take us closer to all those actions which can take us to paradise. Be Isnillah. I ask Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala, may Allah gather us all in Jannatul Firdaus, sitting with the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, looking at the face of Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala as full moon in the sky. Insha Allah. سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته